All right. Uh, happy Thursday. If you take a look, um, when you walked in, you should have both pieces of paper that you picked up from Lab 7. If you don't, go grab them. Take out your gold sheet. From today on, this is why I call it the gold sheet. It really, not just because of the color, but it really is going to seem like gold in here. And you picked up a mini whiteboard. Um, targets, there are two new ones. Although the first one, you're probably feeling pretty confident about that one. I can figure out, I can determine the probable charge of an ion. The second one, this is one that's more new. We're going to take that information. I can write the names and the formulas for ionic compounds. So this is the foundational skill that you're going to need for next week when we start that week-long lab. We're going to be doing 10 different experiments. You're going to need to know what the names and the formulas are of the different things that you're reacting together. Okay? So please take a second right now and write down these two main targets in the back of your notebook. Okay, I would like you to rate yourself on this first target up here. If I give you a periodic table, if I give you a periodic table and you found sodium in the first column, could you figure out what charge of an ion it would make? Don't tell me right now, but that's what I'm asking. Put your head down, fingers up. Four would be no problem. As long as I had a periodic table, I could tell you the charge of sodium for oxygen, for one of the noble gases, for one, verse, which would mean something like, I don't know what an ion is. Okay, the target said, I can determine the probable charge of an ion. How would you give yourself a score for that? Four is, yep, no problem, as long as I have a periodic table. Okay, if you've got a five up, you can't do five, only four. Keep them up, and I'll give you kind of some feedback on where everybody's at. There are probably a quarter of you that have a four. Most of you are a three, and there are two twos. Okay, fingers down, heads up. I'm not going to have you do this one yet, because I already know where you guys are. This one says I can write the names and formulas for ionic compounds. This is day one. You haven't done this yet, so that's what we're going to go over, and I'm going to explain how you're going to do that. Number one thing you need to know is that if you have something that's positive, What's it interested in? Negative. Negative. Okay, so that's the prior knowledge that you need to be able to do this. That's it. Something that's positive is interested in something that's negative. Okay? All right. One little thing that I'd like you to write on your gold sheet, and we're going to start with the easiest. On this table up here, do you, can you tell that on the left-hand side, the metals all become positive, whereas the non-metals become negative ions? Okay, the positive ones are like when you have a couple get married, the guy doesn't have to change their name. Positive ones do not have to change their name. It's potassium, it's sodium, it's calcium, they don't have to change their name. Oxygen, sulfur, potassium, not potassium, sulfur, chlorine, um, they all have to change their name. So that would be kind of like when the woman changes her name when they get married. It's always going to be the same ending, though. So I want you to circle all of these negatives, and you're going to write right next to it. End in I. Is, where is this on the... The same um, side that has the title. Kind of info sheet. Okay, yeah, it's on the top right. Top right, yep. Where you've got N3 negative, O2 negative, Circle all those negative ions, and right next to it, right, end in I. Okay, then you can put it back in the page picker. Take out a dry erase marker and your whiteboard. Okay, Alex, I want you to pick something that's positive. Alex Sayer, pick something that's negative up here on the table. L-I. I want everybody to write Li plus in the top left hand corner. Okay, 
is there? What are you picking up negative? C R. What? C R. The C L I mean. Okay. In the middle of your whiteboard, you're going to write the formula. And at the bottom of your whiteboard, you're going to name it. Positive always goes first. Positive doesn't have to change its name. So what element is this? Lithium. Okay. CL, it's not going to be chlorine anymore. We have to change it to IBE. Chloride. Okay. Naming is pretty easy, right? Yeah. Okay. Now for the formula, what we make when we combine them, we want it to be neutral. We want the same amount of positive as negative. So we're going to need how many of these and how many of these? One and one. One and one. So the formula would be Li, Cl. We don't write the positives or the negatives because they cancel out. Alice and Alice picked some pretty easy ones to start with. Awesome. It's better to start easy and work our way harder. So if it was like Li plus two, would you have to have Okay, Travis, pick something that's two plus on the list. Everybody erase your board because we are going to do another one. Carter, you pick something that's negative. What do you got, Travis? Uh, Mg2 plus. Good. And what one is that? Because it doesn't have to change its name. Magnesium. Okay, so magnesium. What do you got, Carter? Uh, nitrogen, three minus. Okay. All right, let's finish the name first. Nitride. Nitride. Do you, you don't capitalize the second one? Nope. So I don't think even, it's not like a proper noun. I don't think you have to capitalize either one. Okay. Are they separate or are they like? When they, like this would be like if we took sodium and chloride for table salt, the real name for table salt is sodium chloride, like it goes together. Is that what you're asking? So, yeah, so is it, it's like one... It's one thing. It's but one thing. Is there like a hyphen or a space? A space. There's a space. Yeah, okay. yeah that's what I'm saying. Yep. Okay. To write the formula, to write the formula, we need to have equal amount of charges. Equal amount of positive and equal amount of negative. Right now, I have more of these. Three negative, only two positive. Think back to fourth grade, maybe even third grade. When your teacher had you do common multiples, what's the number that both two and three go into? Six. Six. How many of these would I need to get to six positive? Three. Three of them. If I had three magnesiums and each one was two positive, I would have a total of six positive. How am I going to get to six negative? Two. I'm going to need two of these. How many of those? Yeah. Two. Two of them, and they're each three negative, so that gets me to six negative. I don't usually say or share what the shortcut is, but I'm going to. If you take the number that's up here and put it down here, and the number that's here and put it down here, you can do it that way. It does, but if this was a three and a three. You're not going to write three, three. You'd have to reduce it down to one to one. Like three to three ratio reduces it down to one to one. Yeah. What if this was a two plus and this was a four? One, two. Then I would need two of these and only one of those. Let's do one like that. Erase your board. So lead four. So on the top left, write PB, 4 plus. And then let's find something that's too negative. How about oxygen? Okay, let's name it first. That's easier. Brooklyn, what I add is this. If you look on your gold sheets on the left-hand side, If you find PB4 plus on the left-hand side, the name is right next to it. On the left-hand side of your gold sheet. I 
wouldn't say the Latin name. I don't like saying those either. I just like the stock name. Really? Yeah. Oh. And then you have to tell me, because there's lead two and there's lead four. I got to know on the name. Is this lead two or lead four? Four. So what are they using to show what one it is? Roman numeral. Roman numeral. So the Roman numeral for four is a I and a V. Okay? And what's this? Oxide. Oxide. Yes, this absolutely exists. I had some back in the stock room. Lead four oxide. Does it do? How many of each am I going to need? Because I'm trying to get the charges to cancel out. One. One lead. So one of those four positives. How many? Get, how many do I need to get to four negative? Two. Two. Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's make it a little bit harder before I have you do it on your own. Okay, on the right side, just take a look at the right side for a second. This right table that says polyatomic ions. What's one thing that you notice about the polyatomic ions? They have one They're all negative. Okay, so they have two or more elements, all of them. Almost all of them, except one, are negative. Okay, so the real the deal with polyatomic ions is it's a group of atoms, and you don't separate them, they stay together. And the whole group has a charge. Does anybody have Epsom salt at home? Yeah. Okay, let's do that one. So the real name for Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. So if you look on the carton, that's what it says. You should now be able to write the formula for magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt. If you look on your gold sheet, find Mg. And that one's in the top right hand table. When you find it, whisper to your table mate what the charge of Mg is. Whisper it. All right, Kaylee, what'd you hear? Um, two plus. Two plus. Okay. Sulfate, and it's the eight that gives it away, is a polyatomic ion. Put your finger on sulfate when you find it in the table. Travis, did you find it? Yeah. What is it? SO42 negative. Okay, you are absolutely right. This whole thing is a group, stays together. Mg is two plus, SO4 is two minus. How many of each do you need? One. One, write the formula on your whiteboard. Okay, before you show me your whiteboard, show your table mate. Put your boards down. I did see that. Is that right or wrong? wrong. Why is that wrong? Because you don't have two Okay, if I did put a two here, how much total positive charge would there be? Three. Two MGs in there, each plus. So it'd be four positive, and the SO4 is only two negatives. That doesn't cancel out. We have to have the same amount of positive as negative. Okay? And the other thing that I saw was I saw somebody do something like this. Okay, the SO4, I already said it, but the SO4 has to stay together. And you're not going to put anything up above, up here, when you write the formula. Because it's neutral. It doesn't have any charges. Okay? Your turn, I'm going to pick. 
in the top left hand corner, write CA2 plus. Top right hand corner, write OH negative. And it's a capital H, by the way. Capital O, capital H. It is a polyatomic ion. Write the formula in the middle. Name it on the bottom. If you want to work with your table mate on this, feel free. Nothing to put in a pie. All right, show me your board on three, two, one. Okay, now I want you to turn your board and show it towards the middle of the room so that you can see how many different answers there are right now. Because this is new to everybody. Not kidding. Turn around and look. Yeah. Okay, can we all agree that the CA comes first? Yeah. Okay. CA comes first. I was trying to figure out how to do it. Okay. What comes next? The OH. The OH. How many OHs do I need? Two. Two. Right now, I have two H's. And I want two OHs. So how do I get that two to apply to both the O and the H? Parentheses. Parentheses. Could you do O2, H2? You, you probably could, could and it's not necessarily wrong, but by keeping the OH together, you know real fast that it's right Okay, so that's the reason it's taken together. So its name is calcium what? Hydroxide. Hydroxide. Okay. Do we end with an easy one or a hard one? Easy. Absolutely terrifying. Okay, here we go. The hardest one I can come up with. Erase your board. All right, I got one. SN4 plus. That's a really good question. It's lowercase. And then the anion is going to be PO4. Capital P, capital O, little four down below. And that polyatomic ion, the whole thing has a negative three charge. Okay, Travis, what are you more confident in? The formula or the name? Mm, probably the name. Okay. Tell me what you got. Tin phosphate. Tin phosphate. Four phosphate. Four phosphate. Does it really matter? Yes. 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 Yes, it does. Wait, does it? No. Is there a tin, is there, can tin be more than one charge? No. Yes. Yeah. It absolutely can. So if you're back in the lab and their instructions call for tin 4 phosphate and you use tin 2 phosphate, it's a completely different compound. Okay? Okay. Good question. I thought it had to end in I. Phosphate. That's what Only when it's the symbols all alone in the top corner. So P, not PO4, but just P would end in I. You're absolutely right. Okay. Okay, I'll send her down. Yep, bye. The directions to do the my eye on paper. Yeah. There's two people that are in quarantine. Yeah. You're gonna have to follow the directions that are in the blue classroom. All right. Okay. But you've got a better start than they do, not getting any direction like this. All right. Okay. Travis, now it's absolutely right. All right. Um, Sydney, what'd you come up with for the formula? PO4 has to stay together. You said you put it in parentheses. Yeah. And then a four. That's where I got lost. I thought we were supposed to be another four, but I just left a single PO4. Okay. What's the common multiple? Because some people would rather do it this way. What's the common multiple with four and three? Twelve. Twelve. So I'm trying to get to twelve plus. If each one is four plus and I've got three of them, what's that come out to? Three plus. Twelve plus. If each one of these are three minus, and Sydney said we need four of them, what's the total negative? Twelve minus. Or some people rather do this. And you can do that too. But if you leave off.
off the parentheses, what's it look like you have for the amount of oxygens? 44. Oh, that too? Yeah, and you don't have 44. Okay. All right, will you hand your whiteboard and your eraser pad to your neighbor and they'll put it back to you? started. If you have a positive card, that's going to be the first part of every compound you make. All the way down for the name. Hunters, since he's phosphide, he's going to keep that card. The whole way down under the name column is phosphide, phosphide, phosphide. Mm -hmm. Isabel, what are you? Uh, like this or the name? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to look like this. Oh, um, uh, um, ammonium. Ammonium. So every compound you make is going to be ammonium something. Ammonium something. All the way down. That's what makes your chart. So I don't have uh, just an element and two. If you have a polyatomic so ion, what's it called? No. So the phosphate. So everything that you make, guy, is going to end with phosphate. Okay. All the way down. Your whole paper. <laughs> Okay. 
one. was I can write names and formulas for ionic compounds. We're better than we were at the beginning of the hour. 
but we're still not there yet. It's one of the things that you just need some more practice with, okay? So this paper that you have in front of you right now is designed to have a little more practice. If you look on the left-hand side, it kind of gives away what the positive and the negative ions are, and you don't have to do any name changing because they've already done it for you. They're not listing chlorine, they've already told you it's chloride. So if you look on your goal sheet, aluminum is what charge? Three plus. Three plus. So right, Al three plus. If it's chloride, ends in I, that's Cl negative. I can make that a little bit clearer. Okay, so trying to balance the charges, how many of the cations am I going to need in the formula? Four. Only one of them. How many of these am I going to need? Three. Three of them. So that I have a total amount of positive three and minus three. These two need to cancel each other. These two boxes need to cancel each other. Okay, so if I have one aluminum, I'll run AL. How many CLs did I need? Three. That's my formula. Don't you have to have parentheses? I would if I was having more than one element here. CL is not two elements, it's just chlorine or chloride. So the name is aluminum chloride. another one to do on this front. Number nine. Okay, so on your gold sheet, find magnesium. It's in column two. Okay, will you point it out to your table mate? How did you know what the charge for Mg was? Where is it at on your gold sheet? Okay, near Mg in that same table is bromide. What's its charge? Just negative one. Okay, so how many cations will I need in the formula? One. Only one of those. How many of these? so that my total positive is 2, my total negative is 2. Well, do we pretty much just repeat the name of it in the last column? Yeah, you're just taking out the and sign. I picked a really fat marker to write this with. going to be in lab tomorrow. One of the coolest things about all of these ionic compounds is they're also known as salts. There are hundreds and hundreds of different types of salts. Ionic compounds are also known as salts. And we're going to use that to our advantage to make something really delicious in lab tomorrow. Do you get to eat it? Yes, you get to eat it. So we're going to be making ice cream in lab tomorrow. Um, using salt, okay? Specifically using rock salt, which is sodium chloride french fry salt, but just bigger crystals of it. Um, I have lots of gloves, because it's gonna get very cold. Um, but if you have feel like you have really big hands, you're gonna need to bring in your own gloves. Because my gloves are like gardening gloves that fit my hands, okay? You're not gonna be able to do this with your bare hands. It's gonna get very, very cold, okay? And this paper is your ticket to the lab. So yes, you have to have this done before you go back to the lab. Yes, like it could cause frostbite. Yes. Carter, I think you're gonna have to bring your own gloves. Okay. Okay. What questions do you have? And then when you go grab some paper towel on.